Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. Before we begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine, here's a reminder that for top all-round performance from your car, the gasoline to buy is Chevron Supreme. A balanced blend of all eight high-performance qualities, Chevron Supreme is designed and refined to give peak performance under all driving conditions. Quick starting, fast warm-up, smooth acceleration, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, economy mileage, Full power and area blending. They're all yours in every gallon of Chevron Supreme. Try them in your car. Get a tank full of Chevron Supreme gasoline at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now, tonight's story, The Stand-In, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Not a single letter, Brooksy? Uh-uh. You sure? Not a single desperate phone call? Nope. I see. Then why this nocturnal visit back to the office? To have one last look at these beautiful, beautiful figures in the ledger. Huh? No client, and nothing terrible happens. All bills are paid, and there's a balance in the bank. Why, darling, this is a milestone. I see. You're a solid, solvent businessman, a captain of industry, a... Mogul. <laughs> so that's the reason for the celebration dinner tonight. Huh? Of course. Hey, tell me, did you enjoy your dinner, Angel? Well, who wouldn't? I didn't. All that wonderful food. Mm hmm. Did you notice the way that guy kept staring at us in the restaurant? Oh well, these days when you saunter in and order a double steak, it calls for a double take, even from the waiter. I wasn't talking about the waiter. Huh? I mean that husky young fellow at the corner table. He was staring at us all through dinner. Why, George, you're jealous. I'm just wondering. Well, I'd certainly be disappointed if at least one man didn't look twice. This green slinky number I'm wearing is something new. Well, this gray droopy number I'm wearing is something old. And the gentleman kept looking at me. Darn these long skirts. <laughs> okay, let's forget it. Hey, Brooksy, come here. Yeah? Well, at the risk of being serious, there's something I want to tell you. I could never have become a, well, a, a mogul junior grade if it weren't for you. I can tell you how to become a mogul senior grade. <laughs> Yeah, nice moon out tonight, huh? Come on, take a look. It's for free. Oh, yeah. It is beautiful. Yeah, sure. Um, up there, over the building. Not down in the street, dear. I knew it. Look, next to the other building, there's our friend again. Friend? Yeah, from the restaurant. You know, I'm sure of it now. He's been dogging my heels all day. Are you serious? Why? Search me, but I'm going to find out right now. Look, Brooksy, you stay here in the office a few minutes and? with the lights on. He'll think I'm still here. I'll get down and surprise him, find out what he wants. George, are you sure that you are... Brooksy, didn't your mother warn you against strange men following you? Well, I'll go yes. out the side door, through the alley, and then meet you in front. George, you can't just walk up to a stranger and say, Look, bud, just who do you think you're following? Why, well, I never say that, Brooksy. That wouldn't be right. No, of course no, not. No, I'll say, Look, bud, just whom do you think you're following? <laughs> Well, it looks like Mr. Valentine got himself lost, Miss Brooks. I'm worried, Henry. He said he'd meet me out here in front in a few minutes. Oh, he can take care of himself, Mr. Valentine can. Well, if I see him inside when I make him around to the building, I, I'll tell him you wait. Oh, thanks, Henry. Well, I'm going to have a look for myself, even if it means skulking down dark alleys. Never a dull moment. Now what? George? Oh. George! Oh. You're hurt, oh darling. What happened? Oh, oh it's going to be all right. I'll get a cab and get you oh. to a doctor, and I'll be right back. Oh. Right here, driver. In the alley. You'll have to help me with him. Yes, you will, miss. What's the matter? Isn't he feeling good? Oh, he's fine, except somebody hit him on the head and left him right here. He... <laughs> here. Uh. Well, he was here. Yeah. Well, he was. 
propped up against this ash can. I know, I know. Look, miss, are you sure you're all right? Are you implying that I'm... Wait, that car. George was right here, and there was a stranger over there, and now that car. So don't you see? Uh, Oh, definitely. Oh! Please, lady, I'm too old to play cops and robbers. Just what are you going to do now? Uh, that's a good question. I wish I knew the answer. Oh, brother. Hello there. Oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> oh. I can see being married to you is going to be delightfully exciting. Yeah, well, I... I don't want to be an old worry ward, but just where am I? You're home, Paul. Paul? Hey, look, am I sitting on somebody's lap? I'm really too lucky. I was perfectly willing to marry you just for your money. Money? My, how news gets around. But you also have a sense of humor. And you're beautiful. Oh, well, yeah, I, I may be kind of pretty, but... Oh, no, wait a minute. Let's stop this. Ooh, my head. You know, you're really too big a boy to be getting into brawls. And the moment you got off the boat, too. What boat? <laughs> the boat from Australia, silly. Oh, let's start from the beginning, huh? Uh-oh. All this is much too luxurious for a padded cell. And you're much too, uh... Well, anyway, to be a nurse. Mm. Thank you, Paul. And so I draw the rather doubtful conclusion that I am sane and just don't know who I'm supposed to be. Now, uh, just between us, gorgeous, mm. who am I? <laughs> you love to play games, don't you? Yeah. Well, you're Paul Gibson, the man I've decided to marry. How does the idea of marrying me strike you, Paul? Right between the eyes. Uh, what did you say your name was? Gloria. Gloria Bradley. Oh, that's nice to know. I may want to introduce you to friends. Gloria, just when did you decide to make me the happiest boy in the world? And why? Well, it was the simplest thing to do. And you have to admit it's logical. (sighs) Yeah, that's what I like. Logic. Cold, uncompromising logic. When Father died and left the whole fortune to you, naturally the rest of the family was fit to be tied. Oh, yes, I can imagine. My stepmother and my brother Ted were all for putting a violent end to your young life. But I thought it would be easier if I just married you. And we shared all that beautiful money. You and I. You see, I'm not greedy. Now, look, fun is fun, but I'm not in any... I know, you're in no condition to talk about it now. Look, how did I get in here anyway? Well, you were nursing your poor battered head at our front door at four this morning. I draped you on the couch here in the drawing room so you could sleep it off. Thanks. The others are still upstairs sleeping. But I sneaked down early so I could be the first to talk to you. Your friend is in the kitchen getting some coffee. Friend? And I suppose he came from Australia with me. Uh, Carried me in his pouch? (laughs) No, he said he met you at the boat. His name is George Valentine. Oh, brother. Well, wait, Gloria. I I don't mind you wanting to marry me. I'm greatly flattered. I don't even mind sharing my uh, fortune with you. But please don't tell me I'm in the kitchen drinking coffee. What? Oh, you poor boy, your head... You're really the one who needs coffee. Yeah, yeah, you've got something there. And I'd better hurry in the kitchen before I drink it all up. Oh, wait, Paul. Don't you want me to go with you? No, I'll find it myself. I want to talk to this George Valentine. Alone. You... (laughs) Sorry. I just couldn't hold myself back. Now get up. It's a nice right cross you have there, mister. Well, that's for the scalp treatment. Now we start off even. (laughs) Fair enough. What's the idea of following me all day yesterday, and what am I doing here? Well, you know, I almost slipped up letting that girl get down and talk to you first this morning. You might have spoiled the whole show. But you didn't. (laughs) I was listening at the door. Come on, come on, let's have it. What's the deal here? Deal? Oh, oh, I see. Well, um, will you take a hundred dollars? For what? For me, being you, and... You being me. Will you cut that out? I've just been through one of these quiz games with my future wife. <laughs> Don't blame me for being confused. Yeah, thanks. You see, when you came up to me in that alley and asked me who I was, I... Well, I couldn't resist letting you have it. Oh, brother, you're kidding. You didn't really fight against it. No, I'm serious. I knew you wouldn't help me if I told you the truth. It, uh... Well, 
Which sounds silly. I'm getting used to things sounding silly. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, uh, I'm Paul Gibson. Just got in from Australia. I gathered that much. Well, now, Mr. Bradley, uh, Willis Bradley, who owned this house, died about six months ago. He left all his money to me, of all people. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. My mother and Mr. Bradley were childhood sweethearts. Something like that. Anyway, since none of the Bradley family ever saw me before, I got the idea of passing you off for me. Why? Don't you like money? Oh, it's not that. It's, uh... Well, I'm just afraid one of them wants to kill me. What? Yes. There's the girl, Gloria, my brother. Of course, the second Mrs. Bradley. They're all mighty put out because the old gentleman cut them off without a penny. I think one of them sent me this. Let me see that. If you make any claims to the Bradley estate, you will never live to enjoy it. Ah, to the point, isn't it? And if I don't claim the money, it goes to those three, according to the will. Yeah. Oh, this whole thing is ridiculous. Somebody's just trying to scare you. That's all. Forget it. I don't know about that. A couple of months ago, while I was trying to clean up my affairs in Australia, somebody took a pot shot at me. Whoever it was, almost didn't miss. And for a hundred dollars, I'm supposed to find the villain in the piece. The hard way. Playing target. Well, I heard about you taking on all sorts of tough jobs for people, but even then... But I... even then, you thought I'd have too much brains to take this on, so you shanghaied me into it. So, what do you say? Will you do it? Well, i got to make a phone call. There's a young lady who's going without sleep right now because you couldn't resist temptation. Well, now, there's an outside phone right here in the kitchen. You can use that. But will you help me? Uh, well... Well, I've been giving myself some sage and sound advice, which I'm now going to proceed to ignore. Yes. It's a deal, Mr. Uh, Valentine. Ah, <laughs> good. Yeah. From now on, I'll be known as the man from down under. Oh, I hope that's just a figure of speech. In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Say, how long has it been since you've changed the oil filter on your car? You might think it was fairly recently, and then be surprised to find out that you've gone many miles beyond the safe operating period. Oil filters, to do the job right, have to be replaced every 6,000 miles. After that, they're so gummed up with sludge and grit that they just can't hold anymore and become clogged and useless, much the same as a vacuum cleaner when the dust bag is jammed full. So, it's a good idea to have your oil filter checked regularly by the car savers at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations. Remember, your car saver is in business to help you make your car run better and last longer. Now's a good time to be getting your car ready for winter weather driving ahead, so stop in soon for an oil drain and oil filter element replacement at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say, and mean... We take better care of your car. You're hired to take the place of a man about to come into a fortune and marry one of the most beautiful girls in the world. Sounds like a dream assignment. But when said man is marked for murder by persons unknown, well, said dream darkens quickly into a nightmare, even if your name is George Valentine. Anyway, that, in effect, is the subject of conversation between you and Brooksy in the drawing room of the palatial Bradley home on the outskirts of the city. Brooksy, be reasonable. I'm supposed to be incognito. You shouldn't have bounced in here like this. Well, you certainly didn't expect me to sit around twiddling my thumbs while you play stooge. Not so for... loud, not so loud. Remember, the stooge's name now is Paul Gibson, the pride of the Anzacs. Paul Gibson, darling. Please, I don't know if I like strangers calling me darling. And the blonde, easygoing gentleman upstairs is my friend, George Valentine. If you had to give your name away, it could have at least been to a woman. And I know the woman. Yeah, okay, okay. But how am I going to account for you hanging around? You could see I'm the scrub woman in the Australian consulate, and I just had to see you to find out if everything is dinkum in the bush country. Oh, and you don't have to tell me, Ted. This will soon be his house. That would be Mrs. Bradley and her stepson, Ted, I suppose. But, Clarissa, you don't have to be so obvious about it. Well, us. I shall certainly speak my mind to this, this Gibson... Oh, Mr. Gibson. Mm. Oh, yes, that's right. Good morning. Oh, I'm Ted Bradley. This is my stepmother, Clarissa. Who is this young woman? 
Oh, uh, well, I... This is uh, my secretary, Miss Brooks. Secretary? What do you mean? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, social secretary. You know, make all my arrangements for me. Uh, dinners, parties, dog shows, stuff uh, like that. You're not wasting any time, are you, Mr. Gibson? Why should he? Why not wade right in and start spending somebody else's fortune hand over hand? Why should he wait? Oh, come now, Miss Brooks. I'll tell you this much. I'm not going to just stand stupidly by. You may as well know it. I'm willing to do anything. Anything to keep that money out of your hands. She means any legal steps, of course. Oh, yes, of course. I think that's all I have to say by way of greeting. Now I'm going into breakfast. Come in, Ted. Clarissa prides herself on her frankness. See you around, no doubt. I wouldn't leave any lethal weapons around either one of those characters. Oh, what's Gloria like? Gloria? Oh, she doesn't have to worry about lethal weapons. She was born with a whole assortment of them. Oh. You know, Brooksy, that gives me an idea. I think I know how to bring things to a head around here. How? The quickest way. I'm going to tell the beautiful Gloria she can have my hand in marriage. Hmm, Mrs. Paul Gibson. <laughs> I'm going to like that. Yes, yes, I thought you would, Gloria. I wonder if it was something you said that gave me that impression. Hmm. Oh, Miss Brooks, I forgot about you. Why don't you, uh... Scram is the American expression, Mr. Gibson. Oh, that's very cute. I'll make a note of that. One more thing, dear. I promise to make you an exciting, loving wife. As long as your money holds out. Well, there's lots of money. I think this is beautiful. Two people so much in love. Still finding time to talk about practical things. I don't want to start bossing you, Paul, but this, um secretary of yours is entirely too social. All I said was it was beautiful. And but I, I didn't it was... like the way you said oh, it. Oh, now, please, ladies, don't fight over me. Oh, never mind. Now, I want the others to know. Clarissa! Ted! Come in here. I have some news. Oh, she thinks I'm going to let you out of my sight. She's crazy. This is an act, Brooksy, remember? And she kissed you. Nice fight you didn't put up, Buster. What is she going to... What are you screaming oh, about, Gloria? What is it? Here. I'm going to let Paul tell you himself. Yes, <clears throat> Well, folks, I, I know this is going to seem a little sudden, but you know how it is when love hits you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, uh, the simple fact is, Gloria and I are going to be married. There, what? you see? Oh, really? Gloria, Gloria, tell this man he's out of his mind. On the contrary, he's remarkably sane. He thinks he needs a wife to help him take care of all our money. Well, this is a surprise. I'm not going to let you get away with this. At least I'm willing to share Paul's money with him. But you and Ted... That won't be enough from you. Clarissa, let's be reasonable. <laughs> let's face it, Gloria's stolen a march on us. Suppose we try to be good sports about it. <laughs> Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm sure you don't mean it. And good luck, Paul. I still say it's beautiful. Two people so much in love, they don't care who stands against them. You shut up! Mr. Gibson, I was only I know, saying... I know what you were saying, yes. Don't expect me to congratulate you, Mr. Gibson. And you're not married yet, Gloria. Now, don't worry. Clarissa will get over it. I'll talk to her. And so will I. I won't be long. Oh, oh Brooksy, it worked. What worked? All I saw was a family brawl, and Gloria didn't even get hurt. Oh, it was much more than that. Somebody just overplayed his hand. How did you manage to miss it? Oh, it was easy. I don't have any proof, but I think I'll play a hunch and start clearing up this little matter for Paul. Really, Mr. Gibson, I thought you said your little piece. Why did you want to see us here in the library? Oh, uh, Mr. Gibson, your friend Mr. Valentine is still upstairs. I think he's taking a nap. Yes, well, I can see him later, Miss Brooks, but where's Ted? Oh, he's being very gallant. He said something about buying me an engagement present and left for downtown. Oh, well, I particularly wanted him to be here. Uh, well, look, suppose I round up some champagne. Uh, maybe he'll be back soon. I'll answer it. Hello. Oh, where... Uh-huh. Uh, just a minute. It's Ted. Miss Bradley wants to know if you have any preference about the monogram on your engagement present. <laughs> tell my brother I think he's an idiot. He should save his money. He's going to need and it. And tell him to get back here. It's urgent. Oh, Mr. Bradley, your sister wants me to tell you you're an idiot, and Mr. Gibson would like to see you right away. Oh, don't mention it. Goodbye. 
Oh, yes, the champagne. Now, really, Mr. Gibson. Ah, uh, 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 Mother. What? If I may call you, Mother. How I'll find it myself. Now, Gloria. Wait a minute, Clarissa. There's a little matter I want to straighten out now while I have the chance. Oh, you. Who, me? You know, there's something gamey here. Just where did Paul pick you up? Pick me up? Why, Miss Bradley, I wouldn't speak like that about you. Or would I? You know exactly what I mean. He's hardly off the boat, and right away he has himself a social secretary. Oh, Mr. Gibson is a fast worker. Oh, you insolent. Will you stop it, the two of you? They're more... Oh! What, what was that? Oh, it, it sounded like... Well, let's not just stand here. But it, it couldn't have been a shot. It wasn't. It came from upstairs. Here! The stairs! Oh, you, oh, yes. And somebody seems to be using the stairs. Oh! It's Paul's friend, Mr. Valentine. Say, what's happened? What's happened? What is it? The man on the stairs, he... Yes. Yes, I'm afraid he is. You've got a lot of explaining to do, Valentine. Passing yourself off as an Australian, getting yourself engaged to a girl. Yes, Lieutenant Johnson. Yes, I know. Ah, now let's get out of this kitchen. I'm beginning to feel like a butler. Just a minute, will you? When this thing happened, all the women were together in the library. Young Bradley was downtown buying a present for his sister. You were the only one prowling around. Oh, now, wait a minute, Johnson. You don't really think I killed Gibson? I know, I know. You didn't have a motive. I thought I knew who tried to kill Gibson, an Australian, sent him that threatening note. Yeah, who? Well, something's got me stymied. Hey, look, you have a lot of routine detail work here with the boys. Well? Well, give me about an hour, will you? Tell the others I had to step out a while and it was okay with you. Well... Do you think the police department would stake you to a long-distance call, State Department, Washington? Yeah, It's but... important, Johnson. Now, look, here's the door. Lieutenant Johnson... Don't you think this family has had to put up with enough for one day? There's been a murder committed, Mrs. Bradley, and that's illegal. Hmm. I really should feel sorry for myself. It's really funny in a gruesome sort of way. What's gruesome in a funny way? I mean... About me, engaged to the wrong man, and a widow before I'm even a wife. You have my deepest sympathies, Miss Bradley. Incidentally, Lieutenant, where is Mr. Valentine? He took a little walk some time ago. No. With walk? my yeah, permission, does anybody mind? No, oh, we were just curious. No, it's all right. I'll take it. Yes, hello. Oh, Ted, I'm glad it was you who answered. Valentine, what do you want? Where are you? There's something I want you to do for me, Ted, before I get back to the house. Now, you just answer yes or no. But... I don't want any of the others to know what we're talking about. Now, look, beat it upstairs to my room. In the top dresser drawer, you'll find an envelope. Oh, yes? I'm trusting you, Ted, because you were the only one out of the house when poor Gibson got it. That envelope is something he gave me. It's important. I want you to make sure it's still there and nobody got to it. Got that straight? Oh, I suppose so. Go ahead, then. I'll hang on. Okay. Oh, Lieutenant Johnson, it's Valentine. He wants me to check something in his room, okay? I guess so. I'll be just a second. Now, Mrs. Bradley, uh, Miss Bradley, about that threatening note, we're sure to trace it, you know. You certainly won't trace a stupid melodramatic thing like that to me. And don't look at me. Oh, oh no, not again. What that? I know I shouldn't let Valentine get... George, on the phone inside, I... Got... I'm developing a split personality, Brooksy. This guy isn't shot. What did you do to him? Why? The shot was purely for dramatic effect, Gloria. What? I guess, though, I pushed him a little too hard at the head of the stairs. Uh, uh, he'll be all right in a minute. Oh, what happened? Yeah, that's what I want to know, Valentine. I just staged a repeat performance of the little act that was put on here a little earlier today. What are you doing? What are you doing? What's he talking? You heard me, Ted. When you were on the phone today, you weren't out buying a present. You were just where I was a minute ago, using the outside phone in the kitchen. You oh, what? what about yeah, that, John fella? Oh, what do you mean? Uh, what proof has he got? One thing at a time. And there's the telltale phone in the kitchen now. Take it, will you, Brooksy? Yeah, right. What was that nonsense about Ted, Mr. Valentine? Yes. All of you just saw how Gibson could have been murdered with an iron-bound alibi for Ted. Ted? Oh, he's lying. Yeah. Ted, you were the only one here who knew for a fact that I wasn't Paul Gibson. What? How did I know? Gloria thought I was Paul. She couldn't wait for the wedding bells. Clarissa was convinced I was Paul. She hit the roof when she thought her stepdaughter was marrying the fortune. And young Bradley... Yeah, Lieutenant, he didn't mind at all. Graciously, he congratulated the happy bride and groom. And why? 
Because he knew darn well I wasn't Gibson. Oh, George, that was for Lieutenant Johnson. I took the message. You what? Now listen carefully, Johnson. This should explain things, I hope. Well, I hope Your you're... office says there was a passport issued to Ted Bradley some two months ago. A passport to Australia, Ted. Oh, but I... Oh, uh... Ted. That was when you said you were going on a long fishing trip to Rainbow Lake. So Ted didn't have any trouble recognizing Gibson. Not after that pot shot he took at him in Australia. Oh, look, I... Save it for your lawyer, Bradley. And you, Valentine. You better come along. I'll be down later, Johnson. After all, a mogul can't let his business go completely to pot, can he, Angel? Did you ever stop to think that there's a very real reason why some engines need lots of repair and wear out sooner than other engines of the same model, even though both go an equal number of miles? More times than not, it's the motor oil that makes the difference. It either protects or fails to protect. Heavy-duty RPM motor oil gives top protection, actually reduces wear of critical engine parts. So buy what's best for your car. Next time you need oil, be sure to get heavy-duty RPM motor oil at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. George, you know, I simply can't understand how any girl can let herself marry a man for his money. Yeah, Yeah, it must be an uphill struggle all the way. All I'd want is a man with a business that's finally beginning to pay off. A little money in the bank. Yes, I see. It's all the incentive I'd need. Not to change the subject, Brooksy. Hmm? But I took a little look at that ledger of ours, too. And the balance in the bank... Yes? Well, it's uh, pretty much of a mirage, Angel. What are you talking about? (laughs) You made no provision for taxes. When we're through shelling out, I'll be the broker's tycoon on record. Oh, George. But never mind, Brooksy. Look at all the fun we're going to have building up our fortune again. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by David Victor and directed by Kenneth Webb. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, Jean Bates as Gloria, Chester Stratton as Paul, Lee Patrick as Clarissa, and Roland Morris as Ted. Music by Gaylord Carter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.